Hi everybody, Tim here. Uh, today's project is going to be uh, done on the CNC router. And what we want to do is we want to make some clocks. And I've made a bunch of clocks, they make great gifts, and, uh, and maybe even want to get ambitious and, and sell them on Etsy or eBay. And if you're going to do that, we're going to show you some ways that you can do them and maybe make some money off of it. You want to do those, if you're going to make money, try and do it as quickly as possible and make yourself up some blanks. Now there's a couple different ways to approach this. Some of the clocks that I've made, I've made completely from scratch. But uh, you may want to go the other route. And what you have is these are uh, pre-routed out. They have this ridge on here. And they don't have the pocket for the mechanism here in the back though. Now this is the mechanism and you can buy these uh, fairly cheap. You can get these Amazon, eBay, so many different places on the internet have them. You, they come with a set of clock hands and uh, all the, the necessary hardware. I say so they're fairly inexpensive, especially if you buy them in lots like tin. So you can take that or say you just want to make them completely by yourself from scratch. I just went to the lumber yard and I bought a uh, 1x10 and these all make a an 8 inch clock out of. Uh, those other ones are total diameter of, of 11 inch on this particular kind. But say you wanted to go with an 8 inch clock and uh, what you do to, to do this you're just going to mill out a pocket and the hole for the mechanism uh, to go through here and then we're going to flip it around and we're going to put it on a little fixture and I've made up this fixture it's just uh, two holes that, that screw into my table and then a quarter 20 bolt goes through and holds it down and it keeps it from twisting. Uh, and then you can put a set of clock numbers so you can uh, do a bunch of them and pocket them all at once and then you can go through and then number them and then later on should you uh, just see something, some graphic or some clip art that you like online you can actually uh, go to Inkscape and then make a file and then export that in there and then just do that. And uh, that's, that's a good way to do it. I like to make up the blanks and then uh, um, throw on my graphics later. Not that you couldn't do it all at once, you can. It's just that if you have the blanks handy and you come up with an idea, it's, it's easy to just throw the, the, uh, the blank on there and, and start cutting. So uh, we're going to go now to uh, the computer and we're going to show you how you can actually make this and make your cutout for this all in MakerCam. You don't even have to go to Inkscape for that. We'll show you a quick way to, to do that. So let's get started. All right, the first thing we want to do here um, to get started is open up MakerCam. And we'll just type in MakerCam and that's going to take us right to the website. Um, we'll open up that software. For those of you not familiar with it, this is a open source software. Um, so there's no charge to, to use this and it works great for bringing in uh, like SVG files, those little scalable vector graphics. You can uh, take clip art and, and import it in to Inkscape and, and I got another tutorial on, on that so I won't get too in depth with that. But uh, we're not going to need that today. What we want to do is we want to make these clock bases and we can do everything we need to do right here in MakerCam. So I come over here and make sure that that's set to inch because my CNC router is set to inch and I'm pretty good to go. I'm going to shrink this down until I see um, my crosshairs. This is my XY zero point and what I want to do is I'm going to make a circle first. Insert circle. I said it's an 8 inch diameter clock so let's make that an 8 inch diameter circle. That's fine. And then in the center of this, we're going to need a pocket to accommodate that clock mechanism. So we're going to insert a rounded rectangle. And the reason it's a rounded rectangle is that uh, it has corners, it has radiuses on that mechanism. And if we don't put those radiuses in there, then it, it won't fit. So we want to uh, uh, come in, make it 2.220 uh, by 2.220. And the reason I'm doing that is that I measured it with a calipers and it's actually 2.2. .2. So I want 20 thousandths clearance in both my X and my Y. My radius was about a quarter inch and I'm going to make that 0.3 just to make sure it's got plenty of room. Then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a small tiny little circle here. 30 thousandths in diameter. And the reason I'm going to do that is that we're going to move this all over here. Um, by selecting it and drag it to these crosshairs. So what I'm doing is I'm just going to hit, hit this arrow here, click on it, 
and then I'm going to left click my mouse and hold it. Once I've done that, I've selected all of it. Now I can click again anywhere that it's selected and I can drag that over and put those crosshairs right, that dot right on those crosshairs. And that's good. So I can blow this up here and uh, I can grab this pan button and move up so I can see it more. Then I want to get rid of uh, this little dot here. So I'm going to come in here and uh, we're going to deselect everything. Um, and now I'm just going to come in and select that dot and I'm going to backspace on my keyboard, just backspace. And you've gotten rid of that now. Now I want to do another selection and the first thing I want to do is mill this pocket out. So we're going to grab that and now our pocket is highlighted. So let's set that up to machine it. We're going to go into the cam and we're going to go, uh, you can see the different operations you can do here. We're going to pick pocket operation and uh, the name it pocket one, you can name it whatever you want, but pocket one is good enough for me. Um, the tool diameter 0.25 quarter an inch. That's exactly what I'm going to use for my cutter. So that's fine. Now the target depth, that's how deep we're going to do the pocket. Uh, I measured the thickness of that and it is five eighths of an inch thick. So we're going to go 0.625 uh, for the depth of that. That'll make that fit in there nicely and make it fit in there flush. So uh, that'll be good. And then our safety height, that is every time that the um, that the bit retracts, that's how far it'll stay above your workpiece. So uh, 200 thousandths is fine. That's plenty of clearance, uh, especially being we won't have any bolts sticking up or clamps. If you do uh, clamp something down, be mindful of that so because uh, it can come across there and smack it. Our stock surface, that is going to be uh, the Z0, and we'll just leave that at Z0. Your step over 40% of that. So every time that that quarter of an inch bit comes over to do another line in that pocket, it'll move over 40% of the total diameter of that. Our step down 50 thousandths, uh, that's good. That's not a problem. We're not going to worry about the roughing clearance. Just leave that at zero. And our feed rate, I'm going to slow that down a little bit so it doesn't have to work so hard. We'll go 40 inches a minute. I like that. And then our plunge depth, that's how much it, it uh, feeds in the Z. We're going to make that uh, 15 inches a minute. And we're going to go in the direction of counterclockwise. Uh, that's good. So all that being good, I'm going to click OK. <clears throat> then the next thing we want to do is we want to profile this outside. We're going to cut this. So I'm going to come in here and select this and hit my outside. And I'm going to go into my cam operation again and I'm going to profile this. So the profile two, that's that's fine. Um, the quarter of an inch bit, that's good. I did measure the thickness of that pine board and it's like 770. So I want to make sure that I go plenty deep. I'm going to go 780 thousandths on that. Because um, I'm going to take on my corners of my square here and I'm just going to take some screws and screw down the corners and then it's going to cut it out here. And um, so I want to make sure that my bit doesn't hit those, um, those screws. So um, we'll show you how we're going to do that. We're going to add some tabs after that. And we're going to uh, come in here, their target depth 0.780. That'll be fine. And we're going to cut the outside. And our safety height is 0.2 again. That's all good. Stock surface, that remains zero. Step down 50 thousandths. I want to cut that outside at 40 inches a minute and we'll feed down at 15 again and I'm going to hit OK. Now I'm going to come in here and I want to do the calculations. I'm going to come, you see calculate, select it, calculate all. So that's going to calculate the pocket and it's going to calculate this outside. Now if you look, you'll see this outside is still selected and that's just what we want because we're going to add some tabs to this and these tabs means we're going to cut this out and it's screwed down in the corners. If we don't put something, some tabs on here to hold it, it's going to launch that right out of there. It could break your bit and ruin your piece of wood. And uh, how do I know that? <laughs> Trust me. Um, so we're going to come back into cam and we're going to go add tabs to selected. And it says five tabs. That's fine. And the tab width, let's make it 375. 
and tab height. That's how much we're going to leave from the bottom of the stock. Let's not make that too thick. It doesn't have to be really thick. Let's go a hundred thousandths on that. And there we have it. We have our five tabs. And uh, that should be good right there. So what we want to do now is we're going to export this. Um, we're going to go into CAM again and we're going to go export the G code. And this will go into our CNC router. Now I'm using Mach 3, a lot of people uh, use Mach 3, but uh, G code is, is G code for this. Uh, um, it should match up um, with your with your router. Uh, so, but I know in particular it will, will work with uh, Mach 3. So export G code and uh, there's your two tool paths. And right here you can see uh, profile last and you definitely want that you don't want to uh, profile it first or you get yourself in trouble so we're going to go export selected tool paths and we're going to um, collect all we hit click all so both of those are highlighted now and we're going to export these to uh, a thumb drive so we'll hit exported uh, path there and we're going to name this um, clock blank and we'll just hit save all right so now we're gonna before we download our program I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up our um, CNC router and you can see what I've done here I've made uh, some modifications I made a, a shield out of here I just bought some uh, plexiglass and thin plexiglass and all I did was take some one by twos and then stand them up so that'll come in here and these make nice uh, little shields and stuff. The other thing that I did is I bought some of this um, um, this board here this like a uh, particle board or MDF I think they call it. Anyhow um, you can just drill some holes and mount it in there and you use it uh, many times and then when you're done with it, and once you turn it to Swiss cheese, throw it away. It's pretty inexpensive. Uh, there'll be times that you can just want to slide it off and bolt things right to the table. But this is nice and flat. I do some uh, printed circuit boards too and you can tape those down here to keep it nice and flat. So what we're going to do is I took and uh, I took this board and found center on it and uh, then I just drilled holes and I, I took several of them other boards and uh, prepped them all that way. I just cut these out to size and then just put that hole and then this mechanism here I make sure that it's going to fit in here and once we're done with our pocket it'll drop right in there. But uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to take and put that on there and we're going to screw that down <clears throat> in these corners and then we're going to load our software and touch off our tool. We'll bring this over and find this um, XY center. Okay, so it's all screwed down here now. Uh, one one uh, word of caution, you probably want to pre-drill these. This stuff's pretty hard. Um, you want to pre-drill that and then uh, that way you don't split out your wood. This pine uh, can break pretty easily. So um, just a word of caution there. So now we're going to go over to uh, the Mach 3 software and we're going to load in our cutter pass from our Mach 3, 3 software. And we're going to load that G code. And you remember we named it um, clock blank. So we're going to come in here, file, and load G code. And um, that was on a, a flash drive, this GGIF here. So we'll look under all files, and there it is, clock blank. And we'll hit open. And you'll see it just takes a second to load that up there. And um, you can see with this uh, toolpath, you can see there's our pocket and there's our outside. It won't show those tabs on there, but they are in there. Because uh, it'll cut all the way around it until it gets to the very bottom, that last hundred thousandths. And then it'll start stepping up and then come around.
So we've mounted our part, uh, we've cut out our profile in our pocket and we've made a little fixture for it. So now what we want to do is we want to find some clock numbers. And uh, there are so many different ones on the internet. Um, I just typed in uh, um, clock numbers clip art and Bing and I found this one right here. I kind of like it because it doesn't have the ring around it and that way I don't have to go in and uh, cut that out of there. If you do find one that you like, let's say like this, but you didn't want this ring around because it'll try and cut that too, you can uh, save it and then uh, go into paint and just take the eraser or you can actually erase it in, uh, in Inkscape if you like. But anyhow, I, I landed on this one and uh, I think we'll go with that. So let's open up Inkscape and then we're going to bring that uh, file in and uh, we'll call it clock face. And these settings are fine. Just bring that in. And if you've got any questions on um, on this, you can refer to the other video. Now I'm going to hit my minus key again so I can uh, get a better look at that. I want to change my PX, the pixels, to inches. Remember to hit your lock here so you have that. And then we're going to click on that so we can uh, see what size it says it is. We won't worry about that at the moment. What we're going to do first is um, we're going to go to path and we're going to go to trace bitmap. And I want to click on my live preview. And that looks pretty good. But if you get one that isn't, you can adjust it with this uh, brightness cut off in this threshold. You can make it lighter or darker. So you might want to play with that. But I like it just the way it is. I'm going to hit OK and then close it. And then I'm going to pull that off of there. And see the one that has it red dot, the one that has it colored, that's the one uh, that has to go. Um, so we're going to click off that and we're going to bring this one. And this corner right here is our X, Y, zero. Um, so we're going to bring that up to about seven inches. It's an eight inch clock. Uh, somewhere around there is fine. And then we'll just click on this and bring it to what looks to be X, Y, zero. Those things line up pretty good. I like it. So let's um, save that. File, save as, clock face for an SVG. And we'll do that. And then let's go and um, let's open up MakerCam now. And remember when you go and uh, look at that clip art, not all of it will work. Just just try it and, and test it out on a block of wood. You'll find out what, uh, what works and what doesn't. It'll just take a little experimentation. And on these clocks, you're only limited by your imagination. Um, so let's uh, go into edit, and we want to go set edit preferences right here. And remember, this is an Inkscape file, and that has a different value than uh, Adobe Illustrator. So Make sure that's set at 90, then click OK. All these other values are fine. Um, now we're going to bring that in, File, Open SVG, and it's that clock face one. We'll open it, and there it pops up. Let's take this pan, this hand over here, and let's bring that up. Uh, it looks pretty close right there. I, I think that's, uh, that's pretty good. So let's select this, though because we don't want to machine this out of here. And let's select that. And now we're just going to backspace, and then that gets rid of that. So that looks uh, that looks good. Let's, um, OK, so we're going to, um, I think we're going to uh, profile this then. We'll go into our cam, and uh, we'll do profile operation. And uh, we're going to use a small bit. Uh, I'm going to call it 32 thousandths. But really what it's going to be is just a tiny little V bit and uh, 60 degree, and uh, we're going to go minus 40 thousandths on that. We'll see. Uh, oh, we could go 50 thousandths, that would be fine. And then let's take that uh, safety height. Um, we're going to leave it a half an inch just because we got that center bolt holding that down there. It should clear uh, very good at that. And inside or outside, let's uh, profile the outside of this. Stock surface will be Z0 again, the top of the part. And step down, let's do uh, 25 thousandths and a pop there. Our feed rate is fine and our plunge rate, especially if we're taking such small cuts and we're doing it twice, uh, 60 inches a minute and that is fine counterclockwise, that's good. All right, then we're going to come in here and uh, calculate all. 
Okay, looks like it has it. It has um, for our cutter pass there. So now we're going to uh, come in here and we're going to export this G code. And um, it's just uh, the single one profile. So it's going to export selected tool pass, standard G code. That's fine. And we'll just put that on our USB drive and I'll take it over to. Uh, Take it over We're going to load our G code, and that was on our flash drive. So let's pick that up there, and we'll go to all files, part, and there it is. You can see there's our there's our clock. So um, next thing to do, we're going to fire up the uh, fire up the old router here, and uh, we'll get cutting. A router we can see that that fits in nice where we pocketed that out and uh, there's our numbers and you can adjust it however you want you can use a better piece of wood but um, I see it's you can make uh, clock after clock like that and once you have a fixture and they'll all come out just the same now you it's ready for staining or whatever you wish to do with it. well that's all I have for today I want to thank you all for taking time and watching the video I'd like to really thank everybody that subscribed to my channel. It it just blows me away. I didn't. I never expected it, and and all the views that I got on my last uh, CNC router tutorial. Uh, I'll, I hope this one uh, uh, is some benefit to anybody. And again, thank you so much for watching. I, I really appreciate it.